yes, I did dye my hair. It's probably a loose term to describe what I did. I dyed my head, hair not so much. Hello, how are you? This is the Kelpie Knits Knitting Podcast, episode two. I'm really happy that you found your way here. My name is Ailey. I live in Inverness in the Scottish Highlands with my husband, Kieran, and our puppy, Odin. Thank you for all of the love that I got for Odin after the last episode. He's spoiled absolutely rotten and he sends his warmest regards. Although he hasn't tried to trash the podcast setup that I have this time, so hopefully that will continue. I am the yarn dyer behind Kelpie Knits. I dye my own yarn. I've been running my own business for about six months now, operating out of my home. You can find me on Instagram by searching Kelpie Knits Podcast or Kelpie Knits. You can also find me on Facebook by searching Kelpie Knits. I'm on Ravelry as The Kelpie Knits. And I'm also on Reddit, but I don't know how many people watching this will actually use Reddit. I actually have some shop news for this episode. I didn't have a lot to talk about last time. I'm going to talk about that at the end of this video. So stay tuned if you're interested in hearing about news to do with Kelpie Knits yarn. If you're not interested in that, that's fine. That's why it's at the end. This podcast is more about my knitting rather than dying. If you're only interested in my yarn then you can click on the timestamp that's in the description box that will take you to the end of the video and you can find out all of the news that's happening there. You'll miss all of my blabbering so I'd prefer it if you stuck around but that will all be at the end of the video. The first episode was two weeks ago now and I'm completely floored by the response. You guys are so lovely. I honestly can't believe it. At the time of recording this Episode 1 is sitting at about 450 views. That might not seem much to some of you. I don't know how much YouTube you watch, but for me, I'm absolutely blown away. So thank you. Thank you everyone who's watched the first episode. Thank you if you left a comment or joined the Ravelry group. There's so many of you over there and it's become such a lovely place to hang out. I love logging into Ravelry and seeing what you guys are, are talking about or what projects you've been working on. It's absolutely amazing. So. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support. I want to talk a little bit about the Kelpie Cal 2020. I'm going to announce the winner of the January prize for the Kelpie Cal. Um, I'm also going to give you a little bit of a rundown on what that is if you missed the episode or you can't remember. The Kelpie Cal is a knit along, crochet along, sew along, make along, whatever you want it to be. The main point of this cal is to bust your stash. So you can get involved at any stage, any month. The rules of the cal are really simple, really easy. Number one, you have to use yarn that's already in your stash. That seems a bit obvious if it's a stash busting cal, but you cannot buy any yarn for this project, not even to finish it off. So you might need to get creative with some marling, you might have to hold yarn double to reach a certain weight if you have a lot of a certain type of yarn but you don't really have a project to make with it. You might need to get creative but you are not allowed to buy any yarn at all. Number two, you must post a picture of your finished project in the Ravelry group. There's a thread um, for each month of submissions so depending on what month it is, take a photo of your finished project and add it into that thread, that chat that's up in the Ravelry group. If you join the Ravelry group, this will look quite obvious when you see it, but I'm gonna try and have something up on the screen now so that you can see what this looks like. Number three, I was a little flexible last month because the first podcast episode came out halfway through, but now that we're almost into February, your project must have been started this year. So it must have been started in 2020. It's okay if you started it in January, that's fine but it can't have been started in 2019. Lastly, number four, kind of number five, try to post a picture of the yarn you're going to use before you start your project. So tell us a bit about the yarn, how long you've had it, maybe what you originally planned it for and what you plan to make with it now. The kind of number five is, please try and get involved in the conversations in the Ravelry group if you're interested in joining the cow, rather than just posting your photo to the cow. It'll be a lot more fun if you get involved and it's nice to see the community that's already beginning to build over there. So make sure you're taking part. There were a lot more entries into the January 
step of the cowl than I thought there would be. They're all so amazing and you guys, you're so talented and I'm so impressed. I love just flicking through the Ravelry thread and having a look at them all. I find myself doing it a lot more often than I probably should have. I'm quite active over there. I like interacting with you and I loved seeing your projects. It was really good fun. I used a random number generator to pick the winner for the January cow. I numbered all of the projects, I had them saved, and I used the generator to choose our winner. The winner is going to receive the February sock set of my yarn club. The yarn club is called the Great Scottish Playlist Yarn Club, and every sock set is based on a hit from a Scottish singer or band. The February sock set is based on I Don't Want a Lover by Texas which is a little nod to my mum. She loves Texas and goes on quite frequently about how she saw them in Aviemore before they were famous. Um, hi mum, if you're watching. <laughs> anyway, the winner of the January portion of the cow is Handbag Crazy. Handbag Crazy, you won with your submission of your Palm de Pin sweater by Anne B. Hansen. It looked incredible. I'm so happy that you've won the January cowl. I was so impressed with your cabling and it's so cute, it's so tiny. <laughs> Handbag Crazy, send me an email to kelpynits at gmail.com or send me a message on Ravelry, whichever is easiest for you to claim your prize so that I know where to send it to. If I don't hear from you by next Friday, then I'll use the random number generator again and I'll choose a different prize winner. So please get in touch with me, I don't want you to miss out. While we're speaking about the Kelpie Cal, if you're a creator of any kind, of any size, and you'd like to donate a prize to give to the winners of the Kelpie Cal, please get in touch with me at the same email address, kelpienits at gmail.com. I know that the makers behind small businesses are always hugely passionate about what they create and what they love to do. So I would love to share that passion with everyone who watches this podcast. By the time that this video goes up, I will have opened the new threads in the Ravelry group for February submissions to the cow. To submit a finished project for the February portion of the cow, you don't have to have started it in February. You just have to have finished it in February. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. January was so much fun for me and I'm really, really excited. Well, I feel like that took longer than I initially planned, but let's get into finished objects. I only have one finished object this week. I have been knitting a lot, but only one thing has been finished. And as we get through the podcast, you're gonna see why that is. I spoke a little bit about the pattern in the last episode, but this is the Adventuresome Wrap designed by Amber O'Brien. It's one of her advent projects. There are quite a few that she's designed that you could use minis for. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that this would be a really amazing pattern for stash busting. I've had a thought. I might put together a thread of patterns that are great for stash busting that you can use, you can refer to if you want to get involved in the cowl. I will try to have that up for when this video goes on YouTube so you can have a scroll through that because for this wrap I didn't actually use the whole of each 10 gram mini that I got on my advent calendar. Uh, the yarn is from Needle and Fred, I'll talk about her in a minute. Um, I didn't use all of the 10 gram mini on each section. I have quite a lot left actually. So I'll try and make sure you can see this a bit better, but this is all of the yarn that I have left from Needle and Fred's advent calendar. This was stash yarn. I think it was Cascade fingering weight. I honestly can't remember. I had it in my stash from when I first started knitting. So that was about six or seven years ago and it was fingering weight so I was too afraid to use it so I've had this for a long time this is what the individual barriers are made out of but I only used about 50% about 50% of each mini so I have about this much left of each one. So if you're the type of person that doesn't throw away the little bit of a mini that's left over from a project, this would be great for you. You can fill in the sections with about five grams of yarn-ish, um, so definitely give it a go to use up those little bits of scrap. If you were one of the people that left me a comment on Instagram or on my last video talking about the advent ramp, 
and encouraging me to get it finished and saying how much you love the colours, then you were directly responsible for helping me get this done. There was so much lovely support and so many people who really wanted to see it finished, so this is for you. You made this happen. I don't usually have the willpower to get things done that quickly. So here it is. No, the ends are not woven in and they probably won't be for a while. I'm very lazy when it comes to weaving in ends, but just look at these colours. So what I'm showing you now is the portion that wasn't there in the last episode. So I finished this raspberry colour. This raspberry colour, then the blue here, this fluorescent yellow, and this kind of sea foam mint and lilac colour. It's not a lot and it didn't take a long time to finish. So I do, I am kind of baffled about why I didn't have it finished for the last episode. But I'm so happy that it's done. I'm absolutely chuffed with it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to wear it. And like I said, this is Needle and Fred's yarn. It's from her advent calendar from 2019, so it's not available anymore. I have seen that she is developing a couple of these minis into full skeins. I'm excited and I feel terrible because I'm not going to be able to buy any of them because I can't buy any yarn. All of her yarn is beautiful and I actively have to avoid her Etsy shop. Otherwise, this no spend year for yarn would have ended several weeks ago. Definitely go and check her out, Needle and Fred over on Etsy. As for my scraps, I think I'm going to try and make a pair of scrappy socks with them. The only reason I haven't done anything with them yet is because I think to make a good pair of scrappy socks, I am going to need to make them toe up so that I just split each of the leftovers in half and then use up the yarn until it's done and then keep going. And I've never made a pair of toe up socks before, I've only made cuff down. And I'm a little nervous about toe up, I don't know why, I feel like it's a lot harder than a cuff down sock. I don't really know when that's gonna appear because I'll need to get up the courage to attempt toe up socks for the first time. If anyone has any recommendations for toe up sock patterns that are fairly easy to follow for a beginner, then leave a comment or post in the Ravelry group. We have a chatter thread, you could leave pattern recommendations there. That would be really, really helpful because I'm quite worried about it. I get that with knitting new techniques. I get really, really worried about stupid things. If I just tried it, I'd probably feel a bit better about it. Why haven't I tried it? Hmm. So thank you for helping me get this finished. Thank you. You, you are directly responsible for making all of this happen. That's my only finished object for this episode, but as we move into works in progress, the reason for that is going to become more apparent. So my first work in progress I talked to you about last time and I'm excited because I have made some quite good progress with it. So I'm going to talk to you about my Kraken jumper. This pattern goes by the Embrace Octopus sweater on Ravelry, but it's by Maya E. Cerns and the last time that I spoke to you I just had the body up to the point where you separate for the sleeves. But today... I have most of a sleeve and I'm really happy with it. It was a bit of a slog. I'm using my double pointed needles for this. DPNs are usually fine for me. I don't have too much of a problem, but as you can see, I've just started getting to the color work. So you can see that the white is starting to creep in here, just there. And this is the colour work that's going to attach to the body of the jumper and to the yoke. I haven't done the yoke yet. Following the colour work is a little trickier over DPNs. I find sometimes my tension is a bit strange as I go from one needle to the other. Floats and things are quite new to me anyway. This is what my floats look like. So I'm not sure. I don't know if this is going to be a bit of a wonky fitting jumper or not. I hope it's going to be okay. In an ideal world, I would probably use a 16 inch or 40 centimeter circular needle for this rather than DPNs, but I don't have one. <laughs> it's, it's that simple, I don't have one and I'm trying not to buy more knitting supplies as well as yarn 
I'm being a little bit more flexible on that than the yarn because sometimes you just need a particular tool. I'm happy with that. But because I have DPNs, I'm trying not to buy more needles than I need. If anyone has a spare, fire it my way. <laughs> if you don't want your, your 16 inch needles anymore, then you have a very willing recipient of those. My DPNs are doing okay. I think I just said this is a six millimeter DPN. The whole sweater is knit on six millimeter needles. I don't think I said that last time. I'm also knitting this out of Rico Essentials Alpaca Blend Chunky. This is it here, these are my two colors. This is teal and this is beige, so easy names to remember. But I will say, I don't really know if I would use this yarn again for this particular pattern. It's a lovely yarn, but it's not it's not quite as lofty as I would have expected. So rather than using this, I would maybe choose a different yarn. For this project anyway, it would be lovely for something else. Now that I am getting to the color work again, I am finding I'm having to force myself to sit and work on it. It is getting more tricky. I usually try to avoid feeling that way with a pattern. I'll either power through quickly or I'll work on something else instead because I don't like feeling like you're not enjoying what you're working on. This is a bit of a slog. I think it's going to be a while before I make good progress like this again, but I am looking forward to getting it done. A lot of you showed a lot of interest in this pattern and certainly in the YouTube comments I got a few comments on Instagram too. If you decide to make one of these, please share it with me. It's a bit of a challenge, so I would like to see how you get on and I will share in your struggle and offer any advice that I can, purely because I've done it, not because I'm an expert. So yes, this is my progress on my Kraken jumper. The body is exactly the same, this is all I have. But we're getting to colour work and hopefully there'll be a little bit more for you to see next time. I don't really know if this next one counts as work in progress, there has been no progress. I still have my Mermaid Day socks cast on, I haven't touched them since I spoke to you last. I even, I still have my earrings attached to them, I haven't touched them at all. Purely because I've been working on other things, that's the only reason. I really like the way they're turning out, but I just haven't had the time to work on them. I did think that I would show you a bit more of the skein that it came from. A couple of you sent me messages asking for more information on the colourway, so I'll show you that now. The eagle-eyed among you might have noticed it behind me, but this is Mermaid Days. This is the colourway and the same base that I've been using for my socks. It's one of my skeins, it's one of my colourways, and this is it here. It's very bright, very bubblegummy. Uh, it reminds me of unicorns and candy floss, which isn't usually what I would go for myself if I were buying yarn, but I really, really love this one. It's really, really fun. And they do vary quite a lot from skein to skein. So when you're getting a skein of this, it is really unique. No two of these are quite the same. So yes, Mermaid Day Socks no progress. They're only short socks, so I think if I have a bit more time to dedicate to them, they'll be finished quite quickly. I'll find some time and I'll get back to them soon. I did say there was a reason- oh, I haven't got my light on. Eek. How about we try that with the light on? Is that better, seeing more of my face? Or is it worse? I did say there was a reason that I only had one finished object to show you this episode. This is one of the reasons for that. This is a new cast on and I've made quite considerable progress on it. Here we are, and I have some sleeves here. You didn't see any of this last time, and that's because I started it between the last episode and now. I decided not to finish off the projects I already had. I cast on something new. I probably shouldn't really have cast it on, but I did, so it's fine. I don't know if you're watching this, but mum, mum, if you're watching, can you skip ahead a little bit or, you know, turn it off? Because you're going to ruin your Christmas present if you keep watching. Mum, turn it off. This is the Mama Vertebrae Cardigan by Kelly Van Niekirk. I think it's Niekirk. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm really, really sorry. Like I said, this is a project for my mum. For Christmas, one of her presents for me was a card that had an IOU written on one side and a little sketch of this cardigan on the other because I'm a really good daughter and didn't have it ready in time. 
<laughs> when my mum saw this cardi, she really, really loved it and asked if she could have the pattern because she wanted to make one for herself. So I said, no, you can have the pattern. I'll make it for you. I'm making this one out of Rowan wool. This is their Rowan... Hang on. This is their Rowan Pure Wool Superwash Worsted in the colour Mallard. So here you go. Here's a better look. The progress keeper for this. I hope you can see it. I got that as a little freebie in an order that I made from Love Hand Dyed Yarns on Etsy. I ordered some wool in their post Christmas sale. So I didn't buy it this year, still allowed. They sent two progress keepers free with the wool and I've never had a progress keeper. I, I've never had one and I love using it. This shows the progress that I made from last night. So that's where I started last night. That's where I finished. I'm getting through it really quite quickly. I think one of the reasons for that is because it is worsted weight. It's not heavy, it's quite a light wool, but it is worsted, so this is knitting up like an absolute dream. It's this lovely turquoise blue, almost teal colour. It's my mum's favourite colour, so I'm really hoping that she likes it. I've altered it a little bit. The pattern for this size recommends that you knit it until it's about 59 to 64 centimetres long and then you add the ribbing at the bottom. But I don't think my mum will mind me saying this, she's not the tallest person in the world, neither am I. And if this was 59 to 64 centimetres plus a bit of ribbing at the bottom, it would, it would be way too long, it would be a really weird length. I've changed it, I'm knitting it until it's 50 centimetres long and then I'm going to add the ribbing onto the bottom then. I think that will just be a nice cardigan length. This is a really easy pattern to follow. You start from the top and you work your way down and it's knit flat. So you cast on the neckline, you increase for the sleeves. That's what this little line is here. So these are all my increases. And then you separate the stitches for the sleeves. You put them onto a waist yarn. I've kept this nice and loose so you can see the shape of this top a bit better. And then you knit the body all the way down and then later on you come back, you pick up the stitches for the sleeves again and you finish them off to whatever length you like. I think I'm going to have to block it quite carefully so that the edges don't roll, uh, certainly at the bottom, but on the sides of this as well it's rolling quite a lot already so I'm going to have to try and stop that from happening if I can. This is a really easy pattern to follow, I really really enjoy it. The only thing that's a little bit strange, this cardi is designed so that it doesn't have a front it sits kind of here rather than here. It's a little bit strange. I think it looks quite nice. It makes it look very relaxed. But yeah, this is my mama vertebrae cardi or my mum's cardi. So I only have one more work in progress for you and it's another new cast on. I know, I know I shouldn't have, but I did. So who cares? This is the beginning of my Kyler shawl. The Kyler shawl is designed by Isabel Kramer, who is quite a big name in knitting pattern circles. I haven't made one of her patterns before, but I'm really, really enjoying this. I think this is going to be a bit of a slow burn project. I think this is going to take me quite a while and I'm okay with it. It's very meditative and I really love the way it's knitting up. This is how it looks at the moment, although because it's lace, it's a bit difficult to show you when it hasn't been blocked yet, but here we go. You might be able to see me through there, I don't know. But yeah, there's this lovely arrow or zigzag pattern, whatever you want to call it. This is what I've got so far. I have Kaz from the We So and So podcast to blame or thank for this project. She showed her version of a Kyler shawl and it was knit out of this gorgeous purple yarn and I saw how huge this shawl is, I saw how beautiful it looked when she showed it on and I basically just looked at it and decided that I had to have one. But I watched hers in her latest episode of the podcast and I decided that I want one, I need one, so I'm going to make one. And I have. And I'm so, so glad that I have. It's a shawl. It's knit out of fingering weight yarn on four millimeter needles to get this really open drapey fabric. There's something about the arrow pattern, the zigzag on this, that makes me feel like it's a lot more modern looking than a lot of lace patterns. I'm using stash yarn for this. I actually got this yarn from my mum, the same mum that I've just talked about. And 
It is Stylecraft Life 4-ply yarn. Uh, this is it here and it's in their fern colorway. It's a quite a lime green. It's really bright and it's really spring-like. I think it's going to be really nice as the weather changes from what we had today, which was miserable, to spring and warmer weather where you could just throw this on over something and it'll just set off an outfit really nicely. So far I've only had one mishap with this. My mishap wasn't actually my fault. I said last time I was going to try and be quite transparent about the mistakes I make here because my knitting isn't perfect but I was working on this a couple nights ago and I was sitting with my husband and we were watching TV and I can't even remember what he did but he bumped my arm and a whole heap of stitches fell off my needle because I'm using metal circulars it's really slippy. They all fell off and I was a little heartbroken. I managed to fix it, I managed to pick them up again and I think it's okay. The only casualty was these two arrows here. I will try and show you these a bit better somewhere else but it was this one and this one that were affected so it was quite a significant string that came off my needles. The only thing that's happened is they are a little bit wonky. They're still in a rough arrow shape. I think with a little bit of blocking they'll be fine and you won't notice. So yeah this is my Kyler shawl, the beginnings of just the point and this and mum's cardi are the reason that I don't have any more finished things to show you. But I think, I don't know, I try to not have too many things on the needles at once, but I think if you're excited to make something, or something sparks your interest, or really excites you, why not just cast it on? So this wasn't a section that I had in the podcast two weeks ago. Um, I didn't really get around to talking about it. There was something about the nerves of doing the podcast for the first time that meant that everything that I wanted to talk about just fell out of my brain and I didn't, I just didn't get around to it. But I've decided to try the Make Nine challenge this year. And if you don't know what that is, it's, it's been around on social media for quite a while, but I haven't done it before. Basically, you choose nine projects that you want to make during the course of a year. It's a great way to be more intentional about the way that you choose the projects that you want to make. You choose nine and then you make nine. I'm going to give it a go. None of the things that I have shown you so far in the podcast are in my make nine list. I just haven't gotten around to starting them yet. I had things already cast on that I wanted to finish before I started make nine and then I casted two new things on. <laughs> anyway, I will get around to them. I'm super keen to complete Make Nine. The projects that I've chosen for Make Nine are things for myself. Everything that's in the list is something that I've wanted to make for myself for quite a long time. When I make things, even if they start out as being for me, I very rarely keep them. I don't really have any knitted objects that I wear. I want to treat myself. I've been knitting for such a long time and I don't have anything that I like that I get to keep. So you're probably interested in what I want to make. I did post about this on Instagram. I'm gonna list them off to you here and give you a picture of what they look like. These aren't in the order that I'm going to make them. I haven't really decided how I'm gonna do that yet, but here we go. Number one is the Ginny Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. I've made one of her patterns in the past. I made the Weekender last year and I really enjoyed it, so I'm gonna try another one of her patterns. Number two is the Toff Hat by Wooly Wormhead. I'm a huge Avatar Last Airbender fan. I don't know how many times I've watched it, so this hat is right up my street. Number three is the Stardust Sweater by Dragon Horde Designs. I am in love with all of her yarn and all of her designs. Number four is the Eileen bag by Hannah Mason. This is a market bag that's knitted out of a cotton yarn and I've never made anything like that before and I think it'll be really good fun. I'm looking forward to that one. Number five is the Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. Everyone and their uncle has this sweater and I want one too so I'm really keen to get this one cast on. Number six is the Aperture Cowl Dana by Rebecca McKenzie. She goes by Raging Pearlwind on Instagram and she's so lovely, she's so nice. 
Her mermaid top was just featured by Tin Can Knits on her Instagram just a couple of days ago. And I'm so happy for her. She deserves all of the success in the world. I made her mermaid top last year, last summer, and I loved it. It's such an easy pattern to make and it's so wearable and nice. I really want to make another one. I may need to set it aside for 2021, but I really want to make another. Definitely check her out. Number seven is the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. This is another pattern that I feel like everyone has and I don't. I want one. I really love basic jumpers. I wear a lot of knitwear, I love a big jumper, I feel like the detail in the raglan increases is just going to be absolutely stunning when it's on, so very much looking forward to that. Number eight is the Golden Horizon Sweater by Tina Say. She's an amazing designer and she's so vocal and active in the discussions that are happening online about inclusivity in the knitting community. But I also just love the design. It's so unusual with these little running threads of colour through through the whole thing. So really excited for that one. And lastly, number nine is the Mid Coast Sweater by Jennifer Steingas. Again, everyone seems to have a Jennifer Steingas pattern. Everyone has at least one. I don't have any, so... <laughs> I really, really want to try and make myself a colourwork sweater. I bought the yarn to make this back in October of last year and put it off. It got lost in the pile and I just haven't had the time to get back to it. So I'm going to make the time. I'm going to make the time to be good to myself and to make myself a gorgeous sweater that I'm going to love. So that's what I'm going to try and make this year. I'm going to keep you up to date on how I get on with those. I think it will take quite a long time. I've tried to have a mix of accessories and sweaters so I don't get too overwhelmed, but we'll see. If I manage, I manage. If I don't, I don't. If you're going to join in with Make 9, please share what you're going to make either in the comments below or in the Ravelry group so that other people might be able to get involved and check out the patterns that you're going to use. It would be great to see what you're going to attempt and you can keep me company on this Make 9 journey. It's going to be difficult to get it all finished in time, so it would be nice to have the support. Lastly, we are on to shop news. So if you are not interested in knowing what's happening with Kelpie Knits yarns, that's fine. It's been lovely having you and I will see you in two weeks. Lots of exciting things have happened over on the shop in the past two weeks and I'm excited to talk a little bit about what those are here. I have new colourways and I have new bases to chat to you about. First of all are these lovelies here. This is my new fluff ball base. It is a kid mohair and silk blend. I have two colourways. There might be three. Oh, can you hear Odin barking? I think he's okay. He's really bad for that. Whenever someone walks past, whenever the neighbours come home, he barks because he's realised that he'd started it months ago, but he barked at the neighbour across the road and she came over and pet him. So now he thinks that whenever he barks at someone who walks past, they'll come and give him a cuddle because he's a cuddle machine. And I don't really know how to get him to stop because it still works whenever he barks at people going past, they come over to the fence and pet him. If you're a dog owner and you've had this problem and you've gotten over this problem, can you share some advice just down below? please, because I don't know how to get him to stop doing that. He loves people so much and he just feels like he has to have cuddles all of the time. Anyway, this is the fluff ball base and I have two new colourways, possibly three by the time this goes up. One of them will be Snow Bear, which is just my undyed white base, but this one is called Grey Wolf on my fluff ball base try and show it to you here. So it's a silvery grey with a little bit of a lilac tinge in places. The reason that Grey Wolf is now available in the shop is because of Lauren. She bought her friend a My Printer Broke sock set for Christmas. This is just the main skein here. This is My Printer Broke. And when she gave it to her friend, she paired it with a grey mohair like this. 
her friend made the most gorgeous hat using the two. It was this really grown up and classy version of my printer broke and I just thought it was absolutely stunning. So this is available in the shop and I would highly recommend pairing them because they look absolutely amazing together. The other fluff ball colorway that I have is called Plum Wine, just here. It's a really pink purple, it's not a, a bluey purple, it's very warm and luxurious and just makes me feel like anything I made out of this would be cosy and lovely and again quite classy. So Plum Wine and Grey Wolf are both available in the shop now. This is another new colourway to the shop and it's called Aran, A-R-R-A-N and it's this very rich purple with these little flashes of grey and peach, an almost peach gold colour here. And this is named after one of my best friends, her name is Aran and she's a knitter and this is her namesake colourway and I really love it, it reminds me of her and I hope that she likes it. But this is what I want to use for my love note, I think the two of these together, Aran and Plum Wine, are just going to be absolutely stunning. The next one is a little bit more vibrant, this is Pink Punk, so I'll let you get a good look. It's a very, very vibrant pink, a, a reddish pink, I would say, with a stripe of violet and a lighter pink going through there. And there are some really lovely black speckles running through there. This actually started life as the February colorway for the Yarn Club, but when it came out, it just wasn't it wasn't quite right. I've changed the yarn club but I couldn't let this little beauty leave so it's turned into pink punk and it's also available in the shop. This is going to be hard. The final part of the update to the shop is a bit difficult to talk about which is why I've saved it for last. They're really lovely, but it might take me a little while to unpack these, so bear with me. I released a trio of colourways on my new BFL base. This is them here. So I have a green, a brown, and a really goldy yellow. And these are called my Grandas collection. It's fine, it's fine. These are inspired by and a kind of tribute to my granda who died last year. This still isn't easy to talk about. The grief is still quite raw. To be honest, I try not to talk about it. This was the best way that I could think of that I could honour him and keep him with me in a way that felt right. I really love what I've created through this process. I feel really proud that I've been able to turn this into something beautiful. The process of putting these on the site was very emotional. This was what I looked like when the first trio sold and it came on really really quickly and I wasn't expecting it. Can't wait to share these with you and give you a bit more detail about where these colours came from. So this is the first colourway and it's called Botach. Here. I can't really say it properly right now, my mouth's gone all dry talking about this. But it's called botach and that is a Gaelic word for old man and it's what my granny always called my granda. She called him botach and I knew what this word meant before I even knew it was Gaelic. It was just part of my vocabulary. The green is to represent how much my granda loved his garden. He couldn't sit still, so the greens are to represent that. It isn't just a flat green though, there are some olive khaki tones and a sort of teal shade here. And they're to represent the time that he spent in the RAF, which is the Royal Air Force in the UK, if you're not familiar. The second colourway in the collection is called It Might Come In Handy. and. I've tried to make it look like, well, like wood, like a plank of wood or stained wood, 
there are these different brown tones from light to dark and almost a sort of purplish undertone as well which is quite lovely. So this one's called It Might Come In Handy because with a love of gardening and a background as a joiner comes an enormous shed. There wasn't anything you could possibly want to fix a problem that he didn't have. He loved being the person who could fix your problem with something that he had stashed years before. He was amazing with woodwork. He loved being there for his family. Sometimes that came down to just fixing a chair or building a dollhouse for his granddaughters. Oh, I'm putting myself through the ringer for this. <laughs> the last one is called You'll Take a Dram and it's this lovely gold colour. It's quite rich, it's quite bright. I don't know how well you can see but there are these little speckles that I've tried to include here. Now to me this looks like whiskey and makes me think of my granda's hospitality which was famous among the people who knew him. His house was always open and he was always so welcoming to anyone, to anyone. It's difficult to talk about this collection because he's left such a hole behind. But I think one of the lovely things about running your own creative business is that you can channel what you feel into, into art, into something that makes you feel better and makes you feel proud and happy and you get to share that with other people. To everyone that's bought any of these colourways so far, I'm so grateful because they are so special to me and my family that it means a lot to have these going out and being shared with people because I feel like a little part of who he was and a little part of him is being shared with people who maybe didn't even meet him and that's something, that's something really really special. Oh, I need to stop. <laughs> and that's it. Episode two is complete. It's wrapped, it's finished, it's now on its way to you. And hopefully you've watched it with a cup of tea, cup of coffee, with some knitting and enjoyed it and had a nice time. This is a fortnightly podcast. So the next episode will be two weeks from now, which will be the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. We can hang out and have a nice Valentine's Day. <laughs> If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's amazing to me that there, the last time I checked, there was 130 of you. That's, that's incredible. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please click the big red button. It would be really nice to have you here next time and we can chat a bit more about knitting and making and things. Make sure that if you want to get involved with the Kelpie Cal, you've joined the Ravelry group. I'll leave a link to that in the description with all of the links to all the things that I've talked about. I think I had them all last time. They'll all be here again. I do also have show notes in the Ravelry group that are a little bit more detailed. So if you want to find out a bit more, definitely head over there and get involved. It's become a really, really lovely place. Everyone's really nice. I like being there. I like chatting there. So it would be lovely to see you over there too. If you need me in the meantime, you can find me on Instagram at Kelpie Knits and Kelpie Knits Podcast. You can also email me at kelpienits at gmail.com and of course I'm on Ravelry as The Kelpie Knits and the Ravelry group is called Kelpie Knits Podcast. And thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed starting this and I hope that you join us for the next one.